Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. I wasn't planning on making this video because I just thought I was going to undertake a simple pest removal job, but it turned out to be much more complicated than I thought it would be. We're looking here at Buster. Buster has a vermetted snail. I finally decided I needed to take Buster out of the tank and remove that snail. And oh boy, was I ever shocked. The first time I saw it, it was tiny. So I have to work fast here. I pulled the Symphilia out of the tank because a while ago, I don't know if you remember an update I did where I said there was a vermetted snail growing underneath it and I needed to pull it out of there and I just never did. And that was about two months ago. But check it out. I've had this out of the tank for a couple minutes now, so I have to work fast to get rid of this thing. I had to glove up, get my camera going and all of that. I'm gonna flip over the skeleton so that I'm holding it by the skeleton. Look at this thing. So boys and girls, this is what can happen when you get, I guess they call it a breeder. So now I'm going to have to uh, get this thing off of here because uh, who knows how many other babies it's gonna spawn in my tank. So this is very, very tricky. I've just laid it gently in my hand. I really don't want to damage the actual polyp. So I'm gonna wrench that off. I do have a scalpel ready. The hardest thing here is to actually grip the skeleton of the polyp and not the body. So yeah, this is, this is pretty bad because you know, the snail will have retreated into there by now. And someone said if you use a really sharp needle, you can, oh, there he is right there. Well, I don't wanna cut myself, obviously. So I am just trying to get this thing off of here without ruining the coral. It's pretty entrenched in there. These are first aid scissors. It's actually bending the scissors. I mean, they're just cheap because they're disposable, but. Okay, so I'm gonna run and get my bone cutters and see if that does the trick. Okay, so we're back with the bone cutters. Yeah, they're a little bit rusty. I haven't used this size in a while. <laughs> I just feel so bad touching that polyp because I really don't want to damage it. This guy is so big and beautiful. So we're gonna try with the bone cutters to just slice through the shell and get him off of there. I'm holding really tight onto the actual skeleton of the polyp not wanting to damage the polyp itself. And I wasn't thinking ahead, so I don't really have <laughs> salt water to swish around and get that out of there, but I don't know. Are you doing okay, Buster? Okay. Don't wanna leave any chance that it could come back, but who knows, right? It's, it's always a crapshoot. So I have the tube pretty much removed. There's just probably a tiny bit of the shell remaining right here. I'm trying to turn the cutters the other way. Oh, there we go. Now we're spraying it all over the room. Okay, I think I've had it out as long as I want it to be out. Um, I'm becoming very concerned about it now, so. Whatever other vermetids are on here. That's another one. You okay there, Buster? Have to keep flipping him over to refresh my grip. Okay. Now, this goes to show you, I should have removed this thing when it was tiny. This is how much Buster has grown. 
because when this first started out, this was maybe half an inch long and reached right to the end of the skeleton there. This is all new skeleton that's been put on since it's been in my tank. Oh, jackpot. Awesome. All right, that was worth the extra digging, I think. And I don't believe we've done any damage to the skeleton. I don't think anything is ruptured. Okay, all right, Buster. Buster can go back in the tank now. All right, so there's Buster. Roughly an hour after going back in the tank, you can see the green wrasse hole has been spinning stand everywhere again. They do take a while to settle back down into the sand. And you can see that the skeleton is still sitting up a little bit. And in, oh, I don't know, by the end of the week, it will have nestled itself back down in. I don't know what they do or whether it's just snails and stuff that move sand around, but eventually it will be flat on the sand once again. So, there you go, Buster. Got rid of an annoying snail, and hopefully nothing will grow back. Here we are the next morning, and you can see Buster is looking really good. I'm so happy I didn't do any damage to the surface of the coral because that would have been too bad and he would have had to heal, but I think he's going to be doing pretty darn good. So it also proves you shouldn't be intimidated by the idea of dealing with those kinds of pests. Because I sure was, and in the end, I made the job harder than it needed to be because I was afraid to do it in the first place. So thanks for watching. As always, I really do appreciate it. And thanks for coming along on this impromptu ride dealing with a pest that I really should have dealt with a long time ago.